everyone, my name is Lisa Barrett. I'm a PhD student in the Animal Behavior and Cognition Lab led by Sarah Benson Amram. And we're over in the Zoology and Physiology Department. We're looking at Asian elephant personality and problem solving. And before I tell you about my trip to Sri Lanka last summer, what is personality? Personality is defined as consistent differences among individuals in their behavior. And this is well studied in a variety of species, from chimpanzees to squid to black capped chickadees. And so in order to study personality, we have to look at individuals across time and across different contexts. And we have to show variation in their behaviors. So we're interested in the relationship between personality and problem solving. And we're interested in this because knowing something about an individual's personality might be able to tell us how they might adapt to a novel situation. This is particularly important given that the human population is continuing to expand into other animals' habitats, and we want to know which species and which individuals are more likely to be able to cope um, and which ones are less likely to be able to cope with this change. We're also interested in the social context of personality, and specifically in social learning. So if an animal watches another animal, um, does it tend to adopt that same behavior? And does this have anything to do with their, their own personality? We're looking at this in Asian elephants, because unlike in African elephants, which are considered to be threatened due to poaching for their ivory tusks, Asian elephants are considered to be endangered. And this is mainly due to human elephant conflict, which Ramesh talked with you about earlier. And this culminates in an elephant invading the farmland of a local village and the farmer retaliating by defending his livelihood and often killing the elephant. So it's dangerous on both sides for both humans and elephants. This is a picture of a sign that was bordering the national park I visited this summer in Sri Lanka, or sorry, last summer. And in Sinhala it says, please do not feed this elephant pictured here. If you're caught feeding him, you will be prosecuted. And so this was pretty interesting for me to witness evidence of human-elephant conflict firsthand. Elephants are also very social, just like us, and for that reason we think they're very intelligent. Uh, for example, they're one of only eight species in the world to have passed the mark test, which shows us that they can recognize themselves in a mirror. And so we also think they're quite clever at getting over physical barriers to keep them from getting into farmers' crops. More generally, this research can be used to assess candidate individuals for getting released back into the wild. And this was actually suggested to me by someone who works at the Wildlife Conservation Society in Bangkok. Um, so that was pretty exciting for me to hear how my work might be used in the real world. And this research could also be used for elephants in captivity, for example, in zoos where zookeepers might want to assess personalities of their animals and see which individuals are more likely to get along. Um, and so this is really important in group housing of animals. So our ultimate goal then is to determine whether personality and problem solving are related. But last summer, I was scoping out a potential field site in Sri Lanka. In order to look at personality, I first had to learn how to identify individual elephants, because like I mentioned earlier, you need to observe the same individual across time. The way elephant researchers do this is by looking at distinctive markings on elephants' bodies, such as the presence of tusks or tears and holes in the elephant's ears, or different coloration on the ears, like in these pictures. After that, I wanted to assess whether I might be able to present elephants with puzzles, which are basically just baited boxes that have food inside to see if they can open them to get the food reward out. And I also wanted to perform observations of elephants to see if I might be able to gauge their personalities. So I traveled to Sri Lanka, which is an island to the south of India, pictured on the map here. And I went to Udawalawe National Park to work with research assistants that work for Trunks and Leaves, which is a nonprofit that studies elephant behavior. It's founded by a Sri Lankan woman named Sherman De Silva, who actually got her PhD at Colorado State University, and she's now working as a postdoc at San Diego Zoo. 
While I was in the park, I was fortunate to see a lot of elephants, um, which is good. And I was working with a great team of local research assistants who fortunately for me could uh, memorize hundreds of elephants by their physical features. Um, we did run into a few setbacks. For example, uh, since this was a national park, there were a lot of tourists visiting as well to see the wildlife. And sometimes the tourists would literally get in the way of my observations, um, as you can see in this picture. Unlike a lot of parks in Africa, for example, we weren't able to follow the elephants off of the road. Um, and so sometimes my observation periods were quite short. And the elephants quickly would disappear into the bush or into the trees. If you look closely in this picture, you can spot the elephant. Um, but sometimes this is what I was faced with when the elephants weren't staying on the roads. While I was there, I observed a lot of important behaviors which informed my research designs. For example, this is a clip of a bull elephant. He's stripping bark off of a tree that he just knocked down to get a little tasty treat. And I was interested in how he went about doing this. So you'll see that he uses his trunk and his foot at the same time. And this is important for me because it helped me um, in designing my puzzles. So this is one design that I might use with the elephants where there's a ball with food in it and there's a rod stopper going through the middle such that the elephant must remove the stopper and roll the ball for food to fall out of the holes. I also was able to observe a lot of family group interactions and this was important in making my social learning task predictions. So for example, an, an elephant might be more likely to copy a behavior of, a, of kin or a related elephant than it would be to copy behavior done by a stranger elephant. One day, the research assistants took me to an elephant transit home, which is down the road from the National Park. And this was really exciting because it's the only orphanage for elephants that has a successful reintroduction program. And so here they actually teach elephants necessary elephant skills uh, before they're ready to release them back into the national park. And so they radio collar the elephants so that when they release them, they can track them and see how they're doing. So this would be an exciting potential study site for me where we could assess elephant personalities before releasing those elephants into the park. These elephants are orphaned because their mothers usually die from illnesses or getting caught in snares. And the organization there makes its money by having daily feeding so visitors can pay to watch the cute baby elephants. So while I was there in Sri Lanka, it was really important for me to see what the culture was like there. I love traveling and I love learning about other cultures. Um, Uta Walawe has a lot of other wildlife besides elephants. This is a gray langur monkey. I was able to visit a local temple which is on a mountain and in a cave. And it was really cool to see a blend of Hindu and Buddhist traditions there. Because Sri Lanka is so close to India, there's a lot of Indian influences, especially in its cuisine. And this is one breakfast dish that I enjoyed, which was chickpeas and coconut shavings. And I also traveled to the capital, Colombo, um, just to get a bit more uh, traveling in while I was there. So I'm glad I got to see and get a taste of the culture there, in addition to doing my research. So like I mentioned, um, my observation times might be a bit short for getting accurate personality profiles of individuals, uh, but it might be possible to present wild elephants with puzzles, though tourists might interfere with this behavior. The National Park also charges $30 per day to enter, even if you're a graduate student researcher. Um, so this could get quite expensive, and it's definitely a consideration if I return. There was also um, an insurmountable bureaucratic issue in terms of securing a research permit there, and so I wasn't able to present elephants with puzzles. Um, so despite my preparations and discussing with other researchers, uh, I wasn't able to get the research permit, and it's never quite clear if I'll be able to do that. So this summer we have approval from three zoos to go ahead and pilot our methods with elephants in captivity. Um, so we're going to really nail down our methods before hopefully carrying them out with a wild population of elephants. All right, 
Thank you so much for listening, and thank you to the Center for Global Studies for funding this trip.